All right then, my friends. So now I want to move the focus away from variables a little bit and onto functions in Dart. And we've actually already seen our first Dart function, this main function right here, which is the required function for all Dart programs that fires automatically when we run it. So you can see this void keyword, first of all, right? We're going to come back to that in a minute. Then we've got this function name, main, then parentheses, where we can also define any arguments the function takes, and then the function body in curly braces. So functions in Dart look pretty much the same as functions in a lot of other programming languages. So then what is this void keyword all about at the start of the function? Well, when we define a function in Dart, we can add a type annotation before it before the function name to say what type of data will be returned from the function. In this case of the main function, well, it doesn't return anything. So we add the void keyword instead to say that the function doesn't return a value. So when a function doesn't return a value, put void before it. But if we made a function that returned a string, then we'd say string here instead of void. So let's do a couple of examples. So what I'm going to do is actually create a function down here outside of the main function. And that's okay because we're going to invoke it from inside the main function. So it doesn't matter that we define a function outside it. So let's call this function greet. And then inside this function, we'll take in two arguments. The first one is going to be the name and the second one will be an age. Then inside the function body, all I want to do is return a string that says something like, hi, my name is this and I am this years old or something like that. So Let's say, hi, my name is, and then to output a variable, remember, we say dollar sign, and then whatever the variable is, so name, and I'll say, and I am, and then we'll output the age, and that will do. So a very simple function. Okay, so we can invoke this function by saying greet, and then we can pass in the two arguments, the name and the age. Now, at the minute, there's nothing here saying what types these values must be. We don't say this must be a string, and this must be an integer. So we could pass in anything. I could pass in 10 for the name and I could pass in true for the age. And it's not going to do anything at the minute because we're returning a value. So we need to store that. So we'll say final greeting is equal to this. And then down here, we'll output the greeting. So I'll say print greeting like so. So we're returning this string, which is now getting stored here, and then we're outputting that to the console. So let's see if this works. It should work, but we should see my name is 10 and I am true. So let's give it a second. Okay, and this is sticking, so I'm just gonna refresh and try running that again. Sometimes it does this. But now we can see, hi, my name is 10 and I am true. <laughs> okay, so not the intended behavior. So what we can do is specify what types these variables should be by just putting the type annotation before them. So I could say string name and then int age. And now we get an error right here and here because these are the wrong types. So now we need to change this to a string, which will be Mario. And then for age, we need an integer. So we'll say 25. And now those errors go away. If we run this again, everything should work. Okay, hi, my name is Mario and I am 25. Now then, if we click on greeting right here, we see dynamic greeting. So we see dynamic because Dart doesn't know what type is actually being returned here because we've not explicitly said that in front of the function. So we can type this by saying, okay, this returns a string. And now if we click on this, we can see that we get a string value back from this function. It knows that now. So it knows this must be a string. And now if we run this, everything's gonna work the same way. But now if I try to return something here, which is not a string, then we're gonna get an error. So if I try to return a number like 50, then this is gonna cause an error. And it says a value of type int can't be returned from the function greet because it has a return type of string. So let's undo that and put in the string instead. Awesome. So then we have seen how we can pass arguments like this into a function. And in this example, the position of those arguments matters. The name comes first and the age comes second. If we try to pass in the age first and the name second, if we swap those two values around in here, then it wouldn't work correctly, would it? Because now we're saying that this first value that we pass in is the name and this second value we pass in is the age and they're completely the wrong types for those arguments. So we get an error. But even in cases where the types of the arguments still match, we'd still get unexpected behavior from the function if the position of the arguments isn't correct. 
So when we define arguments in this way, they're called positional arguments because the position of them is important, right? However, sometimes a function might have many, many, many different arguments and not all of them might be mandatory, as is the case when we use flutter widgets. And in those such cases, it would be really hard to use positional arguments because we'd have to be really careful in which order we pass arguments into the function when we invoke it. So instead, in such cases, we can use something called named parameters. And when we use named parameters, the order in which we pass arguments into the function when we invoke it doesn't matter. And by the way, when I use the word argument or parameter, I'm essentially referring to the same thing. I know technically they mean slightly different things. Parameters are the values we define when we create the function right here. And arguments are the values that we pass into the function when we invoke it. But you're going to hear me use those terms interchangeably to refer to both of these things. So apologies for that. But anyway, to use named parameters, we just need to wrap the parameters with curly braces, first of all. And when we do that, we're going to get an error. And that error is because we have to explicitly mark these parameters now as either optional or required. To mark one as optional, we add the question mark after the type annotation for the argument. And this means if we don't pass a value in for this parameter, it will default to be null. So we're adding this question mark to say that this value can be nullable, just like we did when we create variables, uh, when we created variables, sorry, in a previous lesson. All right, so we're marking this as optional. Now to mark a parameter as required, we add the required keyword before the type annotation. And this means this parameter is now non-nullable and it's required to be passed in as an argument when we invoke the function, okay? So then, now we have some named parameters. Now let's try passing some arguments into the function when we invoke it. Okay then, so right now we're getting errors and this is because we're using positional arguments, but these are now named arguments or named parameters. So instead what we need to do when we use named parameters is give these a name like key value pairs. So this one is called name, right? And we need to pass in a string. So to do that, we would say the name, colon, and then the value of whatever that is. And then for this one, it's called age. So we'd say age, colon, and then whenever the value is. And now those errors have gone away because now we're passing in the name, which is a string right here, and also the age, which is an integer. And the position of this now doesn't matter. So if I cut age, and put it at the start over here, like so, we're not gonna get an error because now we're specifically saying, look, this is the age variable that we're passing in right here, okay? And also, first of all, let's run it, then I'll do the also, just to make sure this still works. Yeah, it still works. If I now remove the name, it's not gonna cause an error because we said that this is not required, right? We put this question mark here, meaning this is nullable. So if we don't pass something in, then we basically just get a null value for this. And we can see my name is null and I am 25. However, if we took this away and then put required in front of this, then we are gonna get an error because we're not passing that name in. But if we pass the name in now, then the error should go away. Yep, it does. Let's just run this one more time to make sure everything still works. Hi, my name is Mario and I am 25, awesome. So that, my friends, is positional arguments and also named parameters. So you're going to see named parameters a lot when you work with Flutter and you're using Flutter widgets because Flutter widgets have lots of different arguments we can put into them and they're all given a name. Not all of them are required either. So it makes sense to use those named parameters for Flutter widgets. All right then, so that's functions out of the way. In the next lesson, we're going to look at lists and sets.